for today, we just finished our animation project. That was assignment three. So now when we go to assignments, we're going to go to assignment four, and you're going to see that there's a proving ground as part of that. So we're going to open that up. Now, if we want to introduce it and you want to review all of the information for it, of course, you can always follow the course outline, but we can also go to the weekly modules. And what are we learning? So we've learned, you know, image mining, vector shapes, compositing, creature concepts, GIF animating. We're working on our group presentations. And now what we're really learning is not just how to use vector shapes, but how to design our own vectors with a logo project. So this is unit nine. Through this unit, we're gonna do question of the day number three, we're gonna do proving ground number two, and we're gonna complete assignment number four, which is a vector logo, both in black and white and color. That is a mashup of at least two concepts. We're gonna look through some past student examples. And so this is a great way a lot of you have already answered this, you know, taken the time to do this, but you want to do this before the midterm for sure. And this is to help review from the beginning of the course and our beginning reading differences between vectors and rasters. Rasters are pixel based, vectors are algorithms based on anchor points, and then either a straight line or a curve between those anchor points. Then that anchor point can be filled it can be filled with a solid color, which is most typical, which you see here, or it can be filled with a gradient. It can even be filled with a pattern now. And then you can also put an outline, what's called a stroke, onto a vector shape. So here are some examples of modified vector logos in our pandemic age. So when you get a chance, if you haven't already, please engage with this question of the day with more than 100 words and you will get credit for it. And you can see what your fellow students have had to say about it. So for assignment four, which is what we're working on, we want to start with a refined sketch. We want to make a black vector shape and then we want to make a color version. And the color version, we're going to use raster color on a vector shape. And it will make perfect sense once I explain it. But we're going to be working between an, a vector program, either Illustrator or Vector.com, to create our black shape vector. It's not black and white. It's actually just going to be black shapes. What you see here is a black shape vector that has a white uh, stroke added to it with a drop shadow. And that's just to help it show up on this white background in a dramatic way. And then in, in Photoshop, we're going to, or Photo P, we're going to add color attributes to our black shape vector. So you see a past student example, something that was done for Earth Day, and so on and so on. Okay, in all past semesters, we have had a different theme, you know, mashing things up. So puppets and the globe. This was um, a bull and a fork for a kind of barbecue. This was zombies and the, the Twitter bird. And this was mashing up different oil company logos for Earth Day. This semester, we have our own theme to support the, um, the student designed wall film that's going on the new STEM building. And it's the theme of dynamic clouds and soaring flight. So our sketches need to support that. So I will put that, I put that already in assignment four, but I'll also put it where you put your sketches for the proving ground. Theme. So this is for this semester. So our semester mashup theme for our logo designs is dynamic clouds and soaring flight. Now dynamic is not just a decorative word there. Dynamic means that it moves the eye at speed. It's trying to get 
your eye to cut across the image with, with some speed. So we want our clouds not to feel like static, which is the opposite of dynamic. Static means it just stays still. We want our clouds to look like they're moving and, and have movement to them. So if we read through the um, proving ground description for convergent and divergent thinking, so that means we want to exercise this. We want to practice thinking within the, the box that's been given to us. And so that's the theme. And also thinking divergently, trying to push the boundaries of that, that box that's given to you. So this is how you're going to demonstrate your skill. To generate original ideas, I want you to come up with your own idea for how to express dynamic clouds and soaring flight in a black shape logo. And I want you to sketch that idea out in at least three ways. This is the divergent part. I want you to really try to force yourself to sketch an idea that is symmetrical and central. Doesn't mean it has to be absolute perfect symmetry, but the idea that it's like a button that you look at, you know, an icon on your phone. App logos are very often central symmetrical. I want you to force yourself to make a sketch solution. It can be very simple. That is dynamic. That really tries to move the eye across the image. We talked about the Nike logo last class as an example of that. We talked about the Target logo as an example of symmetrical. And then the, the one that's kind of most divergent, hardest to get your head around, is to play with positive and negative space for your image. So in this, there's a butterfly that has a flower. I think these are all mashups of butterflies and plants, right? So you have a butterfly shape, and then in the negative space of the butterfly's wing, you have a flower bud starting to grow. Here, in the negative space, I have kind of an abstract almost tribal looking or cave painting looking bull. And it's surrounded by fork shapes. So the forks are the positive space. The bull is the negative space. Okay. So I have already done my sketches and then I took them into the computer and I darkened them in. Cause remember this isn't line art. We're going to be doing line art next in assignment five. This is logo design. So think of it as cutting it out of black paper. So you want to think, what are your solid black shapes for each of your sketches? And I'll, I'll demonstrate how I brought my sketches in. I just did them on a piece of paper. And the reason I want you to do multiple sketches is so that you're not thinking you need to produce something amazing your first time sketching. You're exploring ideas with your sketches. So in order to put your hand done sketches into the computer without a scanner attached or without having to use an external device like a phone, I just like to use simple tools like my camera's computer, the FaceTime app. And the FaceTime on a Mac is just a way to activate your computer. Of course, there's a problem with FaceTime on my computer right now. But I'm going to do, then do a screen grab of that, that image from my screen. But I can also just go to my email where I did it originally if I need to. Okay, so here's FaceTime. Waiting for that camera to blink on. See if I'll have better luck. While it's loading, I'll open it up in my Gmail. Oh, uh, there's the camera. All right. So these are my sketches. I'm just going to hold them up, make them nice and big on my computer screen. And I'm going to hit on a Mac, a targeted screen grab, which is command shift four. And when I hold down command shift four, it changes my cursor to a little bullseye or crosshairs. Hold it here. And then I can simply draw a box around what I want to capture. This is low res, it's just screen res. I want to make sure I get it all. And then let go. 
it will put it to the desktop. I can close FaceTime. And just like the sketching we've done for previous projects, our landscapes, our creatures, this is to help give us a way to start and build on top of with the digital programs. So now I'm going to open up by double clicking on that screen grab of my hand done sketches. And this can be helpful because it shows it in reverse. It's a mirror image. And this can help you see if your sketches work reversed. And I think this one doesn't work so well reversed. I think this one works just fine reversed, and I think this one can work just fine reversed, and then I have a symmetrical one layered on top of that. It's kind of interesting how sketches can build and develop sometimes. So to clean it up, I'm gonna to go to Tools within Preview, and I'm just gonna say Flip Horizontal so that they're not reversed. And then I can go to Adjust Color, and I can just make it look a little bit cleaner and not so blue. I'm in the shadow here in the classroom, so I have a lot of blue light. You're underneath fluorescent lights, so you have a lot of yellow light. And once you get to the color options, you can just do auto levels. That will even out the histogram a little bit. And then you can change your color temperature. This is just like color balance. In Photoshop or Photo P, I can take out a lot of that blue. Then I'm going to sharpen it, and I can even desaturate it a little bit, all in one nice tool. So those are my sketches. But I want you to notice the difference between the sketches I did by hand and the ones I ended up posting for the assignment. And this I did by using a raster program like Photoshop or Photop. So let me talk you through this. I started doing a symmetrical design, but then with the cloud I was designing, I liked it and I started designing it so that it was asymmetrical. And so what I was realizing was even though I was doing a symmetrical design for this theme, I really wanted something that was more dynamic. So I actually ended up layering two logo solutions on top of each other. So what I did in, in Photoshop was simply separate those two out. And what's great about central symmetrical logo design is you only need half the design in order to fill out your logo. So if I open this up in Photoshop, I'll show you what I mean. So however you sketch, you want to end up with these three approaches. Whether you sketch them in the computer, whether you sketch them by hand, whether you sketch them by hand and then manipulate them in the computer, like I did. I don't spend a lot of time filling in my shapes for logo sketches with a pencil because I can fill them in in the computer much easier. And sometimes I pick the wrong shapes to fill in and I like to have that option. So. What are we doing for this proving ground while well, Photoshop is opening here? We are posting our three sketches. You can do more than that. You'll notice I had an extra sketch that I edited out. And we want to play with these three approaches to logo design, central, symmetrical, dynamic, play of positive and negative space. Even if you're absolutely certain about which one you want to do from the beginning, it's important to be divergent in your approaches, to force yourself outside of what feels comfortable. And that's gonna improve your, your overall design. So the first step is posting it and having these three solutions. If we look at the, the rubric for this proving ground. So if you post three or more thumbnails, you will get half credit for this proving ground. The second step is once more students have posted, because I don't, I want you to comment on another student's work, not necessarily my work. I want you to post as a reply what you think is their most successful logo of their sketches and why. And you do that just by hitting reply here. So to give full credit for the proving ground, which makes progress towards your creative problem solving badge, you need to do both those steps. So we're gonna to try to do that within the next half hour. Make sure you post your sketches and make sure you comment on someone else's sketches. 
All right.